Hello, thank you so much for joining me once again. This video is brought to you by a conversation that happened in a wig making group on Facebook. Somebody was asking about wigs that have the sort of seams built in, um, as opposed to the ones that are just made with a stretchy material stretched over the head. I personally prefer the style because I feel they are less likely to yeet themselves into oblivion. So I thought, hey, I have the ability to make a video about it. Uh, I should probably do that. <laughs> so without further ado, here we go. Okay, so for this method, you need, you need some of this too, and this. Okay. I think this is gonna be everything we need, hopefully. Um, a small amount of non-stretchy lightweight fabric. This is just cotton muslin. Um, doesn't need to be anything fancy. If you have scrap fabric, it works great. It does help if it's lighter weight though. And then this is the actual fabric my wig cap is going to be made out of. It is stretchy mesh fabric. I found this in the athletic wear section of Joann's, kind of where the swimsuit material usually is. It's just a super thin mesh and it's stretchy. Uh, I don't think it needs to be stretchy, but I find it makes the wig, the end product a little bit more forgiving. Uh, regular old rubber bands. I wasn't sure what size I would need, so I grabbed a couple. Pins and a needle and thread. My needles are buried in here. I just, I'm like that. Um, <laughs> elastic. Today I'm going to try out quarter inch flat elastic. In the past I have had success with 1 8 inch flat elastic. Scissors and then pencil and paper and because I'm pedantic a ruler you don't necessarily need the ruler. I like the ruler. Um, I think that's about everything. We're gonna smoosh it all over. Well, okay, it's not everything. You also need a doll. This is Versa. She is a 3D printed doll from Files on Thingiverse. I will link below. She's actually, um, I sculpted her face. Oh, she's all scratched. Oh no. So the, the 3D resin is, you can see, not especially forgiving. It just kind of powders when it gets stretch scratches, so. It's not the perfect material, but you know, she's still fun and I like her. So uh, I did I did sculpt her face, but I did not sculpt her head. Like I didn't sculpt her from scratch. She was done from files on Thingiverse that are under the copyright commercial comp, uh, copyright of share and share alike. So if you use those files to make something, you have to share it in the same manner that the original files were shared. And the original files were shared under a non-commercial, here you go, you can do whatever you want with it as long as you don't sell the final product. So, that being said, if you love Versa, her files are free, as long as you don't try to sell her or things made from her. Um, yeah, check out all of like the Polaris, the she mostly came from Polaris and Alt Polaris, which came from other stuff, which came from other stuff. Like it is, it's like a wiki hole <laughs> of creativity. So many people work together to make this doll and it's so cool. Um, I am going to undress her because I don't want her little dress getting wrecked in this process. And also, you know, to show off uh, some of the changes that I made. This, this became my introducing Versa. This isn't, this wasn't the goal of the, the video, <laughs> but um, I like Versa. She's fun. So she's, changes that I've made included shortening the torso. That was kind of a big change and taking out a little bit of the wasp wastedness, which just didn't suit me. I also re-sculpted the bust to more suit my own personal preferences for dolls. Um, I did not change the hands at all. Look at these gorgeous hands. I don't know whoever sculpted this originally did a fantastic job. They're so pretty. Um, I also 
did clean up sort of work because a few of the files had gotten a little fragmented over the over time and like with the feet you can see her feet are actually a slightly different color <laughs> i ran out of the gray and tried to recreate it using tie and it's not quite perfect but whatever it's fine um but yeah so she's she's a super fun girl and she desperately needs a wig. I don't know if you noticed but the wig she was wearing is entirely just it too huge on her um, and I don't really want to cut down the bangs because the wig itself doesn't fit very good so that's why she is today's contender for getting a new wig. I am not used to this style of jointing so her <laughs> girl girl please no her, her legs do weird things a lot and I think that's mostly just because I am unfamiliar with this style of doll. Like, once you get her in position, she's cute as heck, but getting her there can be a bit of a challenge. On to the actually making of the wig cap. The reason I like to use this material is because I prefer to um, drape my wig cap to make it fit best. So I'm going to first rip off the selvage of this material. Selvage on the material is just, it's woven slightly different and I don't want it to like pucker because of that. And then I'm going to, I'm gonna start with about two inches wide piece of fabric because I know with SD size dolls I've used slightly larger than that and her head is quite a bit smaller than theirs so Versa was printed at 75% so she is about MSD sized so we've got a nice strip of fabric and then this other fabric yeah we got plenty is just gonna be cut in half roughly okay so our two inch strip of fabric goes basically down the center and we need to hold that in place so that's where our uh, rubber band comes in. The rubber band doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be able to hold things in place without a lot of slipping. Now, when you're setting up this first piece, you want to consider where exactly on the doll you want your head cap to cover. If you do it too far up the head, obviously it's just gonna pop off. If you do it too far down, like the face, which that's not too far down at all, but if you do it too far down the face, then you're kind of your hairline isn't going to quite look right. So I take my time when I am first starting this process to kind of find the sweet spot between, yeah, this is going to stay on the doll's head and we're not going to um, create any kind of weirdly low hairline. And you want to make sure that your strip is symmetrical as best you can, all that good stuff. Ideally, I don't want the ear to, to push on that because that's going to make for a weird fit later. I'm gonna try to bring this up just a little bit. So once you have this sorted, and I determine where I want my actual seam to be with this piece of fabric. Like, you see how these little lips kind of flop? where the head starts curving underneath it and the straight fabric keeps going to the side, that's gonna be where 
I want the top of my seam to be. So I guess that pretty all right with the two inches. This is about a quarter inch seam allowance on both sides. Um, then, the, these little pieces are going to actually fill in the gaps, basically. So, where our seam allowance is going to be. I recommend using a pencil when you're drawing on your fabric, on it all. Uh, pen can stain resin is a little easier to clean up but pen can especially stain vinyl dolls in a way that is really just an absolute pain to clean so i recommend pencil okay so we've got our little mark and i'm gonna overlap this by another quarter of an inch just so that we have seam allowance to be working with and then this needs to go basically flat and we're gonna tuck this into, well, actually, do I wanna tuck that in now or later? Eventually, we're gonna be tucking this under the rubber band as well, but for now, we're gonna use the fact that it's free to sort of mark along the edge. Cause you can see like this opening is kinda like a half circle Basically, I want to draft this piece to match that half circle. So, to start off, we just start with the quarter inch overlapping and then keeping about a quarter inch of seam allowance on our middle strip, I'm going to try to pin this down so that it lays flat over the head. It is entirely possible that I am too pedantic about this. I think that you can probably approximate something that will work on most doll heads pretty easily. But that's not how I do. <laughs> like, that's all I can say about that. That's just, that's not how I am. If I'm going to overcomplicate things, or if I'm going to do something, I'm going to overcomplicate it. Okay, that seems to be sitting quite nicely, actually. So now we've got... Well, there's still this bubble here that I don't like, so I'm going to get rid of that quick. Yeah. Okay, so the rubber band is right underneath there, and I'm actually just gonna draw along the rubber band to mark this, and I'm gonna draw that, that, and that, and that, and that. Actually, I should probably just make sure that we're being symmetrical. So I'm actually going to do the same thing on the other side and sort of hope that I've left myself enough material. It's nice to use thinner fabric because I can actually see the edge of my fabric through this white. Um, so that's just, not only is it more likely to drape the way you want it to, but it's also just easier in general. And then I'm also going to mark the other side of the points on the strip of fabric. This is obviously kind of on the messy side. Um, once all that's done, take it all off. 
And then we are going to decipher our markings and figure out what they mean. <laughs> oh no, okay. This is important and I almost forgot again. Mark your front, because they're not always perfect half circles. So this was the front here and this was the front here and then this is the front. Okay, mark your front. <laughs> Now we have sort of the beginnings of what we know. And this is encouraging. This means I did a pretty decent job of keeping, I like to keep this strip actually straight. I just mark it to double check. So I'm thinking this is gonna end up being a pretty straightforward rectangle again. Hopping into voiceover because I got pretty mumbly during this part but I'm really just using those markings to figure out exactly how wide and how long I want that rectangle to be. Then I add a quarter inch of seam allowance along the long sides and a half inch of seam allowance along the short sides. And then of course I just trim off all the excess. Okay, so now I got a pretty straightforward little rectangle. Now we get to decipher these guys. And these guys are fun because they are not going to be perfectly symmetrical. So you see this one came out a little bit shorter, this one came out a little bit taller. What I try to do is sort of split the difference. <laughs> and make something that is basically so that's almost two inches that's about two inches so that's good so then that just means that's about an inch tall and this is about an inch and a quarter tall so I'm gonna bump this one up an eighth of an inch and pop this one down an eighth of an inch while I sketch this out and I've noticed that it's usually a little bit narrower towards the front and a little bit fuller towards the back and that's been with most of the dolls that I've done this for so not a hard and fast rule by any stretch, but also something to kind of keep in mind if you're gonna go in and like sketch it out like I am. So between the two of them, I like this one better. What does that mean? That means that I'm going to use this one as my base. I like to do two of them because you saw where I did need to change this one a little bit and sort of compensate for the fact that I wasn't perfectly even on while I was draping, which is just the nature of draping, honestly. Right now I am adding seam allowance around the entire thing. And then again on the bottom, I'm going to actually add an extra half an inch instead of the quarter of an inch. So, I'm going to cut both layers out at the same time to make them perfectly symmetrical. not perfect since I didn't realize this didn't have that's fine so before I go further I'm actually going to essentially record what I'm doing and this is just gonna make making a wig cap for this doll easier going forward I basically just trace out the non rectangular shape add in the seam allowance, and then 
for the rectangular one, I used the measurements from the piece rather than tracing it, just to try to keep things as symmetrical as possible. So now I sort of have a record. I'm not gonna bother cutting that out yet because I don't need to. Because first, we need to do a mock-up. And now, to mock this up, I am going to pin, oops. We're gonna go ahead and pin our front to the front. And you start like this. So it's just easier to visualize, I think. And then the back piece is actually going to also go like that. This, this piece is so sad, I need to recut it. <laughs> I, can't, I can't deal with it, it's just so sad. So front to front, and then in the same way, back to back. And this is where it gets tricky because you're pinning something that is curved to something that is completely straight. So I will sort of line it up so that it's kind of tucked in there the way it wants to be. And because we drape these together, it should be about the right, it might not be exact, but it should be about the right amount. And I try to pin it as nicely as I can. Getting these curvy seams sewn is probably the hardest part about this project because you might need to try a few times, especially if you're not super advanced in sewing. But even if you are super advanced with sewing, um, it's just really hard not to get puckers when you do this. I get puckers all the time. So that is just how you do the one side. And then you do the exact same thing with the other side and you get what looks like a little cap. And I am going to sew this together so that we can try on our little mock-up here. Okay, so this is what I have got now. And I did end up with a teeny tiny pucker or two. When they're this little, I'm not too fussed about it. It's not a big deal. It's only when they get big and they mess up the amount of seam allowance you have that it becomes a really bad, you know, then, then it's worth redoing. I'm speeding this bit up because I spend an abnormally long amount of time folding it up by a half an inch and pinning it for some reason, which I end up needing to take out right away anyway. So now we try it on. It looks like it might actually be a little on the small side. Okay, maybe putting pins in before I tried it on was a bad idea. So trying it on is tricky because this material doesn't have any stretch, so it's designed to be very, very tight fitting. As you can see, while I struggle to put it on, just be patient and go all around the rim, tugging, and you'll eventually get there. So I am just playing around with it and seeing, do I want to add length anywhere? Do I want to take length away anywhere? To try and get this to fit the way I want it to. And the answer is yes, I need to make a change because for 
for whatever reason, this ended up quite a bit smaller. And this is actually how the last one ended up too. So I don't know what it is I'm doing that makes me have to make this change every time. But I have got my, this is how I want the final wig cap to sit. So we're actually gonna leave this whole half an inch here and then this ends up going up. So let's measure that. So that's a whole three eighths of an inch up. So on our piece of paper, I'm going to measure 3 eighths of an inch up from here on the back side. And this is going to be our new sewing line. So I'm actually going to need to fix this and add my seam allowance back in. And now this Oh my goodness, my phone is just going crazy. So this we've actually decided to include this into the cap. So I'm just going to erase this seam allowance. So that's getting included into the cap. And then this one we're changing again to 3 eighths of an inch. So instead of the half inch that it was, we're actually going to move this to 3 eighths of an inch. Oh, I broke my brain. I want my sewing line to be... Yeah. Okay. So that's going to be my sewing line there, and then this is going to be my sewing line up here. So then we're going to add in our, we're going to add back in the two inch seam allowance, or two inch, geez, the half inch seam allowance. So we've effectively added a little to the back and added a lot to the front. Yep, and then this now should, in theory, work. I think I like it well enough to move on to the fancy fabric. But the first thing I want to do is make sure I get my actual seam allowance on this piece. This part's pretty straightforward so we can zip through. I basically just marked off the half inch I want for my seam allowance and taped it down, cut everything out again. Uh, also I labeled my pieces because it's something I'm bad at and I'm trying to get better at and it makes life a lot easier when you have a pile of patterns that you need to sort and you have no idea what belongs to what. Once I've cut everything out of the stretchy fabric, it's just a matter of sewing it together exactly like I did last time. As you can see, this was tricky <laughs> to get my brain around the first time, but it's easiest to start with the corners, I think, and then just work your way around the curve. Okay, so that's been stitched with a very, very thin, um, actually it's probably not even worth it, but I did put a tiny little bit of zigzag in my straight stitch 
to give it a tiny bit of stretch. And then I made a bunch of mistakes and had to redo them and essentially negated any stretch there might have been, but that's okay. That specific seam stretching is not the biggest deal because this fabric just stretches. So I marked the back and then we can pop this off, pop this on just to see how it's going. And it's going good. It is actually maybe a little bit too loose. Nah, it'll be fine. Um, now, I don't like having all this seam allowance flapping around. So what I usually do is actually just knock it over towards the center strip and then zigzag it down. And it occurred to me while I was sewing too, these seams can be done by hand. Uh, it is absolutely not necessary to do this on the machine. In fact, I think a lot of people might actually find it easier to hand sew. I do not. <laughs> I never have found hand sewing at all the easy option ever in most circumstances. So uh, because, see how the seam allowance sort of ruffles? because this outer edge is wider than, you know, it's there's more fabric there than there is at the seam line. That's why it's ruffling. And that's why I'm gonna choose to push it over in this direction and zigzag it down that way. I think it'll just help to kind of reduce bulk. Um, yeah, so I will do that real quick and I'll be back. Okay, so not the most beautiful stitching. My foot kept getting caught on it as I went, but I am just snipping away the extra seam allowance. This mesh is great in that it doesn't fray even a little bit, so I feel pretty comfortable snipping close to that zigzag. All right. Now we grab our elastic and the tightness of the elastic is going to be partially personal preference, partially the shape of the doll's noggin and partially um, the whims of fate. I don't even know. Like. Getting this right is kind of important though, because if you do it and it's too tight, it's just gonna pop right off the doll. If you do it and it's too loose, it's not gonna hug the head and it's just gonna fall off the doll. So you want a little bit of tension and you also want to make sure that your line for this is gonna kind of match the line for that rubber band that we did at the very very beginning. So I'm thinking this, whoops, whoa, okay, all right. Maybe that's not good. I don't know, let's see. Do it a little tighter. It just feels... Okay, so I'm just kind of going based on feel. Each elastic is going to have a different amount of stretch to it too, so that's going to really... There is no hard and fast rule with elastic, which I think a lot of people want there to be. And there just, there just isn't. Like, every elastic behaves a little bit differently, and you can usually get away with generalizations, but in my experience, it's much better to make sure that it does exactly what you want it to do on the doll first. So I'm marking where I had pinched because that's where... So that was kind of, this is the seam allowance. And now I want to overlap the 
two notches that, or the two little lines that I just made, because we need this to lay flat. So this I'm gonna go and run through the machine real quick just to uh, zigzag over this and make sure this stays nice, nicely in place in a loop like this. Okay. Now, putting this with the back, on the back, we're gonna pop that on her head, and we're gonna pop this over it. Make sure that your elastic is laying flat, and we're also going to make sure that what is going on here? Oh my gosh. Okay. So maybe I did add too much. What the heck? Ah. <laughs> okay, that's all right. Having extra seam allowance is not bad. I added in all that seam allowance and it's like, where was, where was it in the other one? That's probably because this is a bit stretchy. That is something to be careful of when you're positioning your positioning everything in this stage, you don't actually want the mesh to be stretched when it's just sitting on the doll like this. You want your mesh to be a little bit on the looser side. Like you want it flush against the doll's head, you don't want wrinkles and stuff, but you don't want it to be like stretched out. It needs to kind of be in its resting state. The whole point of having it be stretchy is just to make it easier to put on and take off. Okay, so let's, this is not straight. Now I'm just trying to make my wig cap sit symmetrically underneath the elastic that is holding it in place. Okay, I'm feeling pretty happy with where it's sitting now. So, you can see I folded the bottom piece up. Oh wait, that's way too low on her forehead. Come on now, up a ways. Okay, there we go. So I folded the excess material up and I made special care to check the ears are not under it and to check the line of like where the elastic is sitting. And this is the point where I can't continue this on the machine. As much as I wish I could, I don't think I can because as soon as this comes off the doll's head, the elastic is going to pull in a little bit and it's gonna just displace things. So, this does need to be hand sewn. Right now I'm just pinning it in place so that I don't actually like bump it out of place while I sew. And I do have, I did have, here it is. So this is a special, um, this one is actually specifically for wig making, but I think they make similar things for upholstery. You just have trouble finding them small enough. But it is a very specifically bent needle, and it actually works really good for nipping in and out of stuff like this. So like that. Uh, this was recommended by Joe from Joe Sews. Go check out his channel. Um, and it is just really good tool for this specific job and all I'm gonna do now is cut myself some thread this does not need to be double like this this thread I'm using is specifically designed for hand sewing and it's actually a little bit sturdier than machine thread so I'm going to simply 
Actually, that's not gonna work. We're sewing through mesh, so I'm going to use single ply, like I'm not gonna double it like I usually do. And to start us off, I'm going to nip in and grab both layers right next to the elastic. Yeah. Okay, there we go. And because this is mesh and like my knot would have to be obscenely massive to stop it nor like normal, I'm just gonna tie around there a couple of times by hand. Oh my goodness, I'm bad at this. Okay. And one more time for good luck. Okay. So this we can trim down. You don't want to trim this too close, but you do want it, you don't want too much of it hanging out. And then I am going to go all around and just take up little nips of both of my meshes as I go. It is important to get this as close to your elastic as you can. And I do, it's basically just a whip stitch because whip stitches have a little bit of stretch to them. So you don't need like a lot of stretch when you're sewing it on the doll's head like this because it is already stretched. So I could probably do this as like a different kind of stitch if I really wanted to, but this is one that I know works, so this is the one that I'm doing. These stitches aren't like super tiny. You could make them tinier and it would probably look better, but I don't like hand sewing. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do what we can. And this is just going to go all the way around until we meet back front and then I'll get back to you. Okay, so here's what it looks after it's been hand sewn. I did pull my thread fairly tight, which is why you see the little bubbles. That's not a huge deal. Um, I think I am going to... Now we can take it off. And because the existing thread is holding everything in place nicely, I am going to go around and basically do another zigzag stitch like I did there, and then I can trim all this excess away. Alright, so with those extra zigzags, now I feel comfortable just snipping right up close to trim away this extra. Definitely be careful while you do this because you don't want to catch the existing net. That still needs to be a cap. And you don't want to catch your zigzag stitching either. So that's it. That is how I make uh, this fitted style of cap. I feel like this works best on dolls that are especially prone to yeeting their, <laughs> like they just will not keep a, a wig on. It definitely holds on tight. Uh, this looseness is nice for just fit in general and uh, if there's too much pressure, like if this is pulled tight, the pressure pulls the cap up it feels like, so that's why I keep it like nice and loose and I feel like that just makes things stay on more likely. And you can see it just, 
like obviously that stays on no problem and depending on how heavy you make it uh, it might not shift at all um, I have one that I've made in a similar way so my mini fee mini fay oh no I'm gonna be one of those youtubers that pronounces all the resin company names wrong um, anyway my Chloe here um, has a very distinctive wig that I've literally never seen anything like this sold. I don't know why. Um, the wefts for this wig are pre-made wefts that I purchased from Alda Wigs and I've been very happy with the quality of their products. In fact I meant to go buy more and they were on a break so I should go check them out again and see if there's anything I want to buy from them because they have beautiful quality wefts. Um, this is a short weft and it originally went past her feet so for dolls you really don't need to get the long wefts you can go with the short ones um but one thing that i was trying to say is that like this is not a light wig whoops <laughs> so it does pop off she actually doesn't have any silicone cap on right now because i was sewing with her and popping her wig on and off constantly is a lot easier without it. So like, if you make your wig heavy enough, it's definitely gonna pop off. Oh, she's such a mess right now. Um, but, I mean, if you put a silicone wig cap under this, I think she could easily be held upside down and it wouldn't be a problem at all. And if this wig was like half as tall, I don't think it would be as problem either. So. I like this style of wig cap. I feel like, especially for dolls with odd styled, um, like odd shaped heads, this is an especially good option. This wig, you can see, I did hand stitch all the wefts on, and I did use the 1 8 inch elastic on this one, and so far, I'm liking the quarter inch better, and we'll have to see how it performs when there's actually like wefts sewn on. Okay, so I thought I was done, but then I had my two gorgeous dolls sitting here and thought, will Versa's new wig fit Chloe? Actually, Chloe's name is Esme, but she's a Chloe sculpt, so I figure that's easier to understand. But let's see, because I thought they definitely don't really look the same size from the front, from the side. It's definitely a lot closer. So, will Chloe be able to wear it? Uh, make sure I've got my front is front. So, yeah. Actually, that fits just fine. Yep. In fact, I might make a second wig cap with the same pattern because Chloe needs a wig that isn't ridiculous. But yeah, that fits totally appropriately. Cool. So this is another one of the benefits of using a stretchy material for the actual cap itself because I have doubt that the super tight, uh, that this guy will fit. Will it? Am I going to eat crow? Oh my goodness. So it kind of fits. It's definitely a little weirder up top. It looks like looks like Versa's head might be a little bit taller in the head cap area. So interesting. Good to know. And here is the final wig. I did not record sewing the wefts on. One, because this video is entirely too long already, and two, 
I'm not 100% confident in how I do it. The front always ends up kind of sparse and you can usually see the wefts. So when I figure a better way to do that, I will let you know. In the meantime though, this wig cap is absolutely my favorite kind of wig cap. It is the one I am going to continue sewing because they stay on great. I can literally turn Versa upside down and it stays on and she's not even wearing a silicone cap or anything like that. So highly recommend if you have trouble, if you have a doll that does not like wigs, <laughs> this is a great option. So thank you very much for joining me. If you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe and I will talk to you later. Bye bye.